Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today's a pretty awesome one. We're gonna be looking at Worthington Farms created by Moman Little Socks. That is right. He can not only build the most amazing storytelling coaster experiences with time travel, but he can also build theme parks. Here they say. In 1987, David Worthington decided he'd had enough shearing sheep and made a decision to convert his rural farmland into a thriving theme park. He started small, scraping together every penny he possibly could. However, he soon started securing deals with companies like KFC and Starbucks, allowing him to expand rapidly into the park you see today. Worthington Farms is an ultra-realistic, high de highly detailed, small UK park containing two coasters, nine flat rides, a walkthrough experience, vintage car ride, and a train. This park was created for my YouTube series, A Very British Park, and most rides, and even the park itself, were named by the members of the community. And I did check out his YouTube channel. It is actually a really cool Let's Play, and he does a very good job with commentary and all that. So uh, go check out Moomin Little Socks. Links are down in the description below, everybody. And let's get right on into the episode. All right, here we are at a bird's eye view. You can see the farmlands. I love how you put this together. You know, it, it's almost got this Planet Zoo vibe to it with the landscape, the way it's set up, like a Planet Zoo default map. I don't know. There's something about it that's really nice. And then obviously you've converted it into a farmland. Just the little rolling hills and stuff like that. It looks really cool. And the big, giant, empty parking lot. Wouldn't have hurt to put a few cars in there. Considering there are guests in the park here today. 200. Can we get more people in here? What is what is the limit on this? Let's get 500 in here. Oh, let's do better. We could do better. 600? We want to... I, I know you guys love it when there's guests bumping around. Let's do 800. Uh, however, most of the time, we cannot handle it. Boomin's Park here runs at 60 FPS. It's quite beautiful, which means you can pack in the guests. So, we're bumping it up. I don't know where the uh, guests actually pour in from, where the spawner is. But uh, we'll, we'll see as they start wandering in. So, here we go. The Worthington Farms. Love the plaza area. Oh, here they come. Guest services. They're coming all they're all coming from guest services. <laughs> well. But you look at that. Let me get the volume up. Alright. Well, there's another 600 guests pouring in. This should make this uh farm bumping. Pre-booked. I think I'm pre-booked. I got my ticket from Moom and Little Socks. You didn't get pre-booked, did you? Turn around, buddy. Turn around. <clears throat> Why can't he enter? It's actually kind of curious. Why are they all turning around? Can they get in? What? They can get in over here. Well, as long as they can get in... Kind of interesting that they can't... I guess you're not pre-booked, buddy. I actually don't know why that's happening. Well, let's not be too bothered by it and go check out the park. I'm, I'm a big fan of these kind of mini parks with extra detailing. It's like, th this is what would happen if you did a mini park but allowed people to build outside but said, like, you know, keep it simple. And, um, how big actually is it? Sorry, I know I should be exploring the park. It's about the size of our mini park. It's probably a little bit bigger. And we recently talked about doing another mini park contest on one of the episodes. And I was thinking 60 by 60 is what I would like to do next. And uh, it doesn't mean like it has to be a jam-packed experience. As you can see here, there's only two coasters, some rides. But I think it's quite nice. Beautiful little boomerang here. Love the colors on it. Like the signage, the realism of the cues, the garden work. Everything here is looking beautiful. Let's um, walk on down all the little details of the signs and stuff, safety equipment. That's yeah, really, really solid. Nice little boarding station here. Some, get some shade, some overhead coverage. And here we go. People are lining up. You even put a little box in there for the um, operator. Awesome. 
boomerang trident there's a look at all the stats if you want to see them and i'm not closing it down we're gonna get on with the guests here today we might have flailing get uh flailing arms so we're gonna do the look forward view and uh why not go to the back let's see how this is fill her up woohoo yeah i like it Awesome. I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the color of the the way you colored the, the coaster train here or if it's the lighting, but something about this seems so like vibrant and realistic. I almost feel like I'm using a reshade filter on this. I don't know what it is. It feels exceptionally different than some of the parks I've seen in the past. Maybe that's because some of the parks have been just so jam-packed and clustered, or when you give it a little bit of breathing room and you open it up a little bit, you can really start to see the details and how beautiful this game engine actually is. And it also might have to do with the fact that I was checking out RCT Classic last night, <laughs> and maybe my eyes are like, oh, this is what it looks like when it's not pixelated anymore. Um, could be a combination of all those things. By the way, RCT Classic is actually really awesome. There's a difference between RCT Deluxe and Classic. And uh, apparently Classic only came out in 2017. And uh, I remember I bought it in 2017, but I remember opening it up and thinking, oh, this doesn't seem much different. We did a direct comparison last night between uh, Deluxe and Classic. And oh my God, is it remarkable. The actual graphics have been rehauled. And uh, I'm actually contemplating doing a comparison video because it's going to blow your guys' mind. Um, it's really quite phenomenal. So anyways, we'll save that for another day. I just wanted to throw that out there because I was literally looking at it last night. I think we're going to ride the train ride because why not? Small little park here today. But how do you sit in this thing? Uh, maybe, hmm, maybe we just sit. Let's try it. Let's see how this turns out.
And I really do love it when we have the guests in the park. It makes quite the difference. You don't see this often. It's almost like... I feel like it's like my first time playing Planet Coaster. We've done so many parks lately where it's just no guests. And you forget how immersive it makes it when they're all walking around having a good time. And after just seeing like <clears throat> RCT Classic, I mean, I think they improved it to a point where you can get like 10,000 plus guests in. And uh, you can zoom all the way out and still see them. It's really quite phenomenal. And that's just something like... You're so used to seeing all the guests in the park and it's still running good, whereas Planet Coaster is a little less fortunate that way. However, I am going somewhere with this. <laughs> we have a bunker here. Let's go check this out. What if we did the mini park contest at a 60 by 60 just like this? We did talk about teams, but uh, we also discussed... How do I get in here? I guess that's supposed to open. Um, we discussed allowing teams, but then we also thought, why not, like, allow people to go solo or teams, then we do a teams bracket. Some people have suggested teams brackets. I like that idea. But, one of the requirements I think we could do, let's go to night here, is, um, oh, maybe it's not as nice at night. Hmm. Uh, we could force it so you have to have a thousand guests walking around your park. So that we get that full experience, you know? Crowds and people and coasters and all that stuff. More like what we're experiencing here today. What is this? Oh, it's our little dark ride. The bunker. Uh, light rail pol polarity. It's closed down. Hmm, which way is it going to go? I think we need to go this way, right? Maybe we'll want to do a track view for this. Let's see what this is all about. And should I be at nighttime? I would imagine so. Well, guess we'll see. Wait a second. What is happening? It's just a little loop. Hmm. Oh, there's some unfinished details. I don't think we're actually supposed to be down here. But then there are details at the same time. Huh. Well, there it is. A little bit confusing, but, I, like, you put all this work into this queue and all this stuff, which made me think, um... I mean, this has to be intentional. Interesting. They got a big building for it. Fun, nonetheless. Not mad at it. The missile. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. See, looking down and seeing all those guests running w running around and walking about. Seeing the view of the coaster running beautifully. This is just perfect, in my opinion. Perfect little park spotlight. Which has me very excited for putting constraints on you guys again for a future mini park. And I love the 40x40 40 40 challenge, but I definitely think it could be bigger. And a lot of people think, oh, well... Bigger means I have to do more. Like, I have to jam pack it end to end. And, like, so many people just, like, squished everything into those 40 by 40s. And uh, some of them even were laggy. But I think, like, 40 by 40, but spread yourself out. I mean, a 60 by 60 or, or even 80 by 80, but spread yourself out. Give yourself some breathing room. As we can see here from Moomin, Moomin's Park here, I think this would be a great contender had this been designed for a mini park contest, allowing people to build outside the borders a little bit with like the parking lots and the farmlands, just to create like a beautiful um, kind of like scenario where you, the park is centralized in the middle and you have the uh, outer areas. I think it's a great idea, like a little bit more variable room for people to work with and um, not force you to fill it to the titties. <laughs> All right, we got a little car ride. It's closed down again. So we might as well just jump on the front seat. Check this out.
Gotta say, your detailing's just impeccable. It's very lovely. Very realistic. It's so much fun. Worthington Gardens, really clean signage. Everything's clean. It's beautiful. Risk. So many great details. It's phenomenal. Well, we have um, a bar cast over here. Where's the actual entrance to this guy? This is it. Risk. Here we are. Oh, it's closed down again. <laughs> Alright, well, there's a look at all the stats. We're gonna put in a test mode, get in the middle seat, check it out. Boom, short and sweet. Let's open it up. Let the guests start pouring on. I want to see uh, see it from a different view. It's nice looking. Where are these fish and chips? Love the colors over here. This is great. Just the colors of the fences. Co matching the flat ride. Matching the uh, kind of the, the fish, fish and chips areas. The builds. <laughs> Beach Hut Snacks. Yeah, really, really fan of all this work. The little trailers back here. Some facilities. This is just awesome. <laughs> Nestle Ice Cream. I even like the way you did this uh, open pavement area with just some rides plopped down. They're kind of seamlessly integrated, and you use the, uh, whatever these things are called, barriers, the metal barriers, uh, to create this little fairground area. <laughs> like, you see a lot of people plop down flat rides, and it looks just messy. Um... You, you did the queue without rails and then decorate it with barriers and it's so seamless like this is really well done <laughs> it's a great way of plopping down some flat rides without just the squiggly queues and you know how it is with the how beginners do it and <laughs> even sometimes ourselves <laughs> this uh, take a page out of this because this looks clean I like it this little fun land it is fun. <laughs> Look at all these little details. And this is what I love about these smaller parks, is we can really play. Walk around and play and adventure and really take a look at all these details. We have a lot more time. Because we're not going on 40 different coasters. And uh, we could even, you know, take a second to appreciate the flat rides. Which we did in our mini park contest as well. And I am talking a lot about the mini park contest because it's been on my mind lately. Um, because it was some of the best parks we had ever seen, in my opinion, in terms of frame rate, experience. Uh, but I do think it could be better. And as you guys may or may not know, we do have a limited amount of submissions. I mean, there are a lot of parks in the bin but they're not at all at the quality of this and they're not all mega parks and they're some you know like they're some of them are work in progress and you know we try to hand select the ones that we think you guys will enjoy and that we will enjoy 
I don't want to feature a park unless I'm excited to feature it. And when I opened this one up here today and even looked at the screenshots, I knew immediately I was going to be excited. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how we have to go about choosing what we want to feature and why uh, for fun factors. What we enjoy and what we think you enjoy and a combination of those. And we just want to get in there and have a good time. And not all the submissions deliver that. Uh, and with that, you know, we're featuring like four or five parks a week sometimes. We're going to run out. <laughs> so we kind of need a, a, a mini park contest to not only build up submissions again, but to have a nonstop influx of parks to show you guys while we build up submissions again. And as you can see here, this is this is a really, really good size. And part of me wants to use Moomin's uh, creation here as almost an example. Whoa, we turn it sideways and it fits 60 by 60 literally perfectly. It's almost as if he had my 60 by 60 barrier. It's perfect. You gave yourself a 60 by 60 and built it perfectly in there. That is interesting. So what if I use this as like an example, said you have to build a park within this, but you're allowed to do exteriors, you're allowed to do some landscaping, you're allowed to do a parking lot. And that's what I was trying to say is when people were like, oh, 40 by 40 was so hard to fill. Well, this is filled, but it doesn't need to be coaster, 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 you know? Put some buildings in there, some staff facilities, some parking lots, some little fun lands in the corner, and some realism, two coasters, a track ride, a bunch of flat rides. It's perfect. It's a really high quality park. And we got a thousand guests walking around or 800. Even 800 doesn't fill this park up that much. I think we could have pushed this to 2000 easily. It's really quite impressive how uh, they've all disappeared onto rides. They're all on this freaking train. <laughs> They're in the queues. That was my favorite part about RCT, by the way. I, I would just think of guests in the queue and I would just start frothing from the mouth and I'd be like, I gotta go play RCT. I would just think of a queue full of guests and uh, that was like my childhood, you know? Just like you get the spark of inspiration by something. And for me, that was the queues. Just uh, making all these attractions and seeing them filled up, seeing the guest thoughts and they're all excited to go on certain rides. So much fun. I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm going through a nostalgia trip between RCT and my mini park content and try to <clears throat> bring that all together and go, how do we make Planet Coaster 2021 uh, rejuvenated? And I think this this is a step in the right direction. Moomin and the Little Sox did a beautiful park, realistic, beautiful details, great path work, great navigation, amazing branding, uh, fun little areas, great colors, great choice of daytime lighting, good theme between the Worthington's farmlands. You have a backstory and uh, it all goes together. Like this is solid. <laughs> I love it. If there is a, a template, if there is uh, something to take notes on, I'm going to keep my eye on this one in the future when we start talking more about mini parks. But we have to get through the uh, the movie coaster contest and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it, we only featured the mini parks almost six months ago. So it'll probably be towards fall or end of summer where we actually do something like that. But it's, it's good to start getting ideas and getting community feedback and thoughts. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on uh, both the mini park, maybe a little bit of RCT. <laughs> I love to know your little uh, your experiences with RCT what you think of the this this size of a park for a mini park contest and of course I would love you to uh, comment about what you thought of Moomin's British hyper realistic mini park did you guys love it as much as I did I certainly did and uh go check out Moomin Little Socks's YouTube channel links are in the description and uh love to see Moomin Little Socks with the park build after experiencing his two coasters which I thought were phenomenal so there you guys go ladies and gentlemen that is Worthington's Farms Parks spotlight thank you all so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you all in the next episode bye now